Hello, so this is a simple tutorial where I will first of all explain what I do to get the look I'm going for and after that I'm just gonna explain my process so basically you come home you got all this footage you're like okay um, you gotta just gotta select all bring them into your um, MLB app and then what I do is fix bad pixels auto from a smooth 2x2 you're going to copy copy everything then I mean copy nothing except for fixed focus dots fix and chroma smooth these three that's okay go over here control a select all and then paste and then you basically go into your settings make sure it's cinema dng lossless if not just change it make sure that it is selected because sometimes it will even if you're selected it and then close it back and goes out anyways make sure it's cinema dng and then export using this button to where we want to export then once your clips are exported you can just close this bring your clips into resolve okay and then you select your clips so next color go into your color tab first of all decode using project change that to clip okay then we are gonna i'm giving my final method i've used many many methods before this has worked for me the best so go into gamma i mean go into uh, color space select black magic design once you select black magic design in your color space your gamma is automatically going to be selected to black magic design film click on highlight recovery you have one node over here make two more okay and then go into effects put a color space transform um usually it will be it will show you all your effects you gotta look for color space transform put it on the first and the third nodes okay next what you got to do go into your first node open your effects panel input color space select um black magic da vinci white gamut second one select black magic design film output color space um select um, okay let's for now let's just select da vinci white gamut and uh, over here we're going to select da vinci intermediate okay so now um go into your last node go over here select uh, da vinci white gamut and select uh, the inch intermediate output color space this select rec 709 in both and now yep that's it now this footage is graded what you gotta do is um let me just close all this so it's easier to see okay so all you have to do now is um grade between these two nodes so don't touch these nodes these these nodes will be at the beginning and at the end of your footage so you all you have to do is um grade from here so if you want to add more nodes add more nodes add uh, different kinds of nodes whatever just grade between these two nodes and you should be good okay so this is basically it that is all you have to do now let me go back and explain why i'm doing what i'm doing okay so now we are in um, mlb app okay so basically what what we're gonna try to do is explain why am i using cinema dng lossless so as you can see over here everything except for cinema dng and uncompressed avi and prores 444 and maybe this one too are lossy codecs so you're gonna lose some data in gopro city from 12 bit you can have most of your data except for the, the if you're shooting in um, 14 bit you won't get the 14 bit data and uh, in progress 44 i think that's also 12 bit so practically saying lossless but not actually lossless for color depth but anyways cinema dng lossless is the best size um, while keeping most of the quality so Compare that to ProRes 444, uh, it's like a tenth of the size, so literally 10 times smaller. That's why I prefer that. I have done some tests and I don't see much difference between uncompressed and lossless Cinema DNG. There's a size difference of like two times, so Cinema DNG uncompressed is two times as big, but I don't see much difference between those two, so I just prefer to use lossless. If you ever want to do a quick thing, I think issue 64 should work fine for you, but uh, if you want to grade it later, make some like creative decisions that are gonna push the image a bit more so i wouldn't recommend using h264 or anything also cinema dng you can uh, open multiple sessions of mlb so you just like okay wait a second so we can just open multiple sessions of mlb and i can load different clips onto them so for example in this one i have this clip i can um put this clip in that one and i can have this clip and the third one where's the third one gone okay so here's the third one so i can have three different clips and they can all render at the same time and you can have faster renders that way but anyways the main reason is i do not like using issue 64 
because I don't get more uh, latitude in post. My method uh, is trying to get the most latitude in post. Okay, so let me reset this all and let me show you. Um, you know what? Let's just go back here and let me, let me just delete this and put it back in again. Where is that clip? I think this is the one. Okay, so I like to shoot in um, anamorphic 5 yeah, anamorphic, not actually an anamorphic, just fake anamorphic type of thingy. So, yeah, I just need to open that. Okay, so now, what am I doing over here? So, my aim is since the EOS M, I'm shooting with the EOS M, has got a very bad dynamic range thingy. Like, it's very limited. Even in photos, I see that dynamic range is extremely limited. So, I want to maximize the dynamic range. What you usually do, uh, what people usually recommend is on clip, uh, got a space as Rex on nine, and select the gamma and put it as Rex on nine. If you get highlight clipping like this one over here, just clip, uh, take highlight recovery, and this should go away. Okay, it's mostly gone away. You cannot see it. That is fine. My issue is when you try to pull the highlights down, the pink thingy comes back. So that is that was my main reason for switching from uh, Rex on nine to like something else. Also. As you know, working in a log color space or something like a flatter color space, you will have much more latitude. For example, we already have linear over here. Linear is much more flat. To, okay, this is not exactly a flat one, but it gives you more dynamic range. So there's a video by a creator. I forgot. I cannot pronounce his name, to be honest. So I'm going to put his name right here. And he has a good video. I'll link that down in the description below. And I'll put a picture of it so you guys can go have a look if you like. Uh, who, who had a method where you're using the linear gamma and you got your uh, color space transform and you're basically gonna use that so okay, input color space let's go select linear and uh, let's go linear where is it wait no in p3 okay there we go sorry about that linear output color space now okay so now we have two options i uh, either we can um, set the output color space to our final color space, which is um, I expect Rex 709 for most of you. So you put it Rex 709, and now you can have like a finished image and you can grade after it. But I will not advise doing that since you've gone all through all the, the hardships of putting it in a bigger color space and a gamma. So now, if you do not have, if you're using a Rex 709, image to grade you're already going to be clamping down the values so what you want to do is if you want to use only one node um, use this as your last node so basically you can just delete this put this over here and okay so yeah all grading will now this is your last one and all grading before that will be done before that so if you're not doing grading you do it in these nodes and this node will be your last node this will give you more latitude without clipping your um, highlight details or shadows as as quickly if you don't want to do that if you want if because linear is a strange color space I do not really like to work in it what you can do is you just simply go back to your color, color space transform put one in the first one um, sorry wait so this is gonna be our first one right okay so okay so now you have your first one all right in which you have your color space transform where it transforms it from a p3d16 linear color gamma to uh, rex 9 but since we don't want like to work in rex 9 or linear we're going to change it into a more usable uh, log gamma that we used to Arial Alexa is a very popular one as everybody knows and we use Arial log c and similarly now we're just simply gonna uh, work in these two nodes Obviously, you can add more nodes later if you want. And the last node and the first node, we'll leave it alone. You go into the last node, do this before you've started grading. Input color space, Arilexa, since over here we're using Arilexa and Arilexi. So input color space, oops. Arilexa, input gamma, log C, output, uh, Rx709, most probably. Unless you're doing some kind of HDR video, then you can use something else. You know better than me at that point. Cool. Now we have our image. We can just go over here and grid as we like. The problem with this one is you can um, you can see maybe a small pink thingy. 
but uh, that is usually not a problem you can usually get rid of it very well it's, it's not that big of an issue like let's take another clip I'm just gonna copy this grid I'm gonna paste it on the same one same grid over here okay look we lost all the pink thing issue is sometimes you get some kind of uh, banding issues like as you see over here also since this is a linear linear gamma curve all the raw settings will affect the linear gamma curve and i noticed that the shadow controls are not are not normal at all like i just put it like half a point of shadow and all my blacks are completely crushed same goes with um, this control everything goes very quickly you start to see strange outlines across things like look at this it's, it's not supposed to be like this only thing that works well in the raw tab is obviously your color temperature your tint um saturation to an extent works well mid-tone detail obviously sharpness fine exposure exposure 2 works normally to a point not exactly because it does not drop the exposure down as as i would expect but mostly it, it works fine highlights to work okay depending on the situation but uh, no contrast no gain controls no lift controls and um yeah no shadow control so that is extremely annoying and since like all this is absolutely non-destructive so you want to use this if you can but since i cannot i are still looking for another method and now here's the last method let me just reset this and let me set this to 5000 kelvin okay so now coming to the last method the last method is my favorite method because it works the best for me so basically colors uh, go into color space select black magic design you'll see automatically it will select black magic design film over here i'll let you turn on most of the time it's it's gonna work pretty well and you go into your color space function. okay so as before you've got two options either you can work in the gamma of black magic film black magic design film or you can work in another gamma if you want to work in two different gammas you'll need two color space transform nodes and your first one is going to be transforming it from black magic design film to your preferred color, color gamut for example we can select Arri Alexa, okay and your last node is going to be um, going back from Arri Alexa to rec 709 let's say okay so let's say let's say that's what you want to do so obviously you're gonna have to fill out everything let's go back over here rec 709 input gamma log c let's go back here Arri Alexa, fine Arri log c um black magic design film there we go input gamma um damage value gamma. okay so what i noticed was um this this particular gamma curve somewhat crushes the shadows but you can just um bump up the exposure and it should be fine so now you see the shadows normally you may not need to do that depending on your camera i don't have just use a your sim so yeah basically that's it for now and you have your thing as usual all your grading is done between the first and the last node if you want to add more nodes, just all this, all this, you've got your more nodes. Okay, so now if you want to use only one node, you're like, okay, I don't really need Arri Alexa. So for what does Arri Alexa, uh, what is different between Arri Alexa and um, you might ask the DaVinci White Gamut or the Blackmagic Design Film Gamma. So I'm just going to disable this node. So what you're seeing over here is the Arri Alexa Gamma. Okay, and if I disable this node, this is the Blackmagic Design Film Gamma. All right, you can change the input gamma uh, over here, but since this is the one we have selected over here, I think this one works the best. Although technically, it you can change it, but I don't know if you're gonna have good results or not. So, DaVinci Intermediate may work because it's the same; it, it works in a similar fashion. I don't know exactly how, but as you can see, it does not really give you much difference. So, um, but this is technically the correct one. Also, if you're like me and you don't want to work in Arri Alexa Logs and Logsy, you can just select something else like uh, DaVinci White Gamut and um, DaVinci Intermediate. Go back into here, DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. So basically, I'm going to open all these nodes and there we go. We got our finished image and now we can start creating. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. I think I've explained everything yeah um so yeah that's it hopefully this video is helpful um 
Let me show it in another clip. So let's go over here. I mean, wait, let's grab a stool. This is the one. Let's apply grade. Yeah, okay. So as you can see over here, like before, we did not have, we had some issues over here of banding and stuff looking weird. Now, even if I drop the highlights, you may be able to see the pink, but to be honest, if you're just watching it in a video, you don't really notice that it's not that bad because it's handled quite well. The highlight roll-off is handled pretty decently despite the fact that I've completely blown the sky out. As you can see, the diamond grant of this camera is not good. Like you barely can see anything in the shadows. That is with the exposure bumped. If I drop the exposure on it, see it more. So yeah, um, that's the best we can do for right now. So yeah, hopefully you found this really helpful. If you did, uh, let me know if you want more tutorials. This month I'm making lots of videos so I can force in two or three tutorials if you like. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.